This episode is brought to you by Marantz Model 40N, ISA's Smart Amplifier of the Year. The most musical sound simplified. Last Christmas, we reviewed the Audio Lab 6000A Play streaming amplifier, and I thought it was a fantastic sounding amplifier, like truly, really just one of the better ones I've heard at around, you know, $1,000. For me, it sounds better than the Blue Sound Paranode, the Blue Sound Paranode Edge, the Sonos Amp, the Rotel A11 Tribute. These are some of the kind of more affordable things that I've heard this year after that review. So yeah, the Audio Lab for me is the pick of the bunch when it comes to sound quality. But when it comes to streaming functionality, I'm not so keen. And I explained why in that video that I think went live just after Christmas in 2021. Now, basically it comes down to DTS PlayFi back then. Well, I had two grumbles, well, maybe three grumbles. <laughs> Firstly, the biggest grumble was it wasn't gapless. That for me is a huge no-no. Second one was the user interface. I don't love it. I don't think it's as good as Blue OS or Lightning DS that you get with Auralic products or pretty much any other streaming app. I think the only one that's worse is M Connect, but that's a free generic kind of thing. PlayFi is its own sort of special ecosystem made by DTS. And the interface, I guess you'd charitably call it satisfactory. At least it is for me as somebody who's you know, using Spotify Connect all the time, Apple Music, Tidal, all of those apps have much, much better user interfaces. And then my third complaint about PlayFi was that if you were using it in standard playback mode, the stream would travel through the phone on its way to the Audio Lab amplifier. So it would come down from the cloud, travel through the phone, and then hit the amp, which I thought that's just pretty much like AirPlay. Don't love that really, but there's no reason for it to do that. But they did have something that I later discovered and explained in a follow-up video. They have something called transfer mode. Now transfer mode sends the stream's URL to the Audio Lab, and then the Audio Lab then pulls that down from the cloud, which is great. So when you turn off your phone in that situation, the music keeps going, whereas it didn't before. If you turn off your phone in standard playback mode, the music stops. So transfer mode was great, but it still wasn't gapless. In normal playback mode, the gap was enormous, like five seconds. In transfer mode, the gap was down to about a one second gap. So pretty much similar to Google Chromecast, but again, if you listen to, I mean, I've done this to death on this channel, but if you listen to anything that requires seamless transitions between tracks, you don't want your software or your streaming software inserting gaps artificially. It, it knocks you out of the hypnotic state of music. It does for me, it does it with DJ albums, Genesis albums, Tool albums, classical pieces. Like there's just so much music out there that I think demands gapless playback. And we've always had that from the CD. We've always had it from vinyl records. We even had it from cassette tapes. Streaming has seen us go back a little bit, but PlayFi, for whatever reason, really dragged their heels on adding gapless playback to their platform. They've been promising it for years. Last month, IFA took place here in Berlin, which is basically the biggest consumer electronics fair or show in, yeah, I think in all of Europe. And I heard that DTS were there, and they were basically saying that gapless playback is coming to PlayFi soon. But we've heard all this before. We've heard it many times before. They're working on it, it's coming soon, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. And that was, you know, like up to five years ago. But this week, this week, DTS rolled out an update on Android to the PlayFi app. And I think it's version 8.1 or something like that. And it says right here in the release notes, gapless playback for newer PlayFi products. We're finally there. So I'm about to do an update on my Audio Lab 6000A Play to see what gapless playback enabled PlayFi in app form looks like. So we've updated the PlayFi software. Let's play some music. Let's go to plus, just to check the speakers are there. 
Tidal. Let's do a search. Now, in my original video, I used the DJ mix from John Tejada because I am cleared for this. So go to Tejada there and albums. I want view all albums. It was a very old sort of funky house album, Backstock. There it is. Now, what we're looking for here is a seamless transition between tracks. So we're coming up here towards the track transition. Will there be a gap? No gap. It is finally gapless. Break out the champagne. Okay, now let's see what happens when we turn the Wi-Fi off. So go to the internet. I'll turn off Wi-Fi and I'll turn off my 3G as well. Now the reason I'm doing this is I'm testing to see whether the stream is traveling through the phone or not. So obviously it can't detect the speakers anymore because it's not connected to any kind of network. But the music's still playing, but there we are, it's stopped. So in that mode, the standard playback mode, the stream still travels through the phone. But to stop that, we need to use this thing called transfer mode, right? So we transfer that. Now what that does is that sends the stream effectively to the Audio Lab amplifier streaming board so that it then is now pulling down the stream. So if we turn the Wi-Fi off now, I don't think it's going to have any impact on the stream because the Audio Lab is now pulling down this John Tejada track. Yep, still going. Once again, a reminder that the only reason I'm using this album is that it's, a, it's the only DJ mix album that I'm copyright cleared for in these videos. But anyway, we're in transfer mode now. Now, let's say that I'm listening to this album and I want to find another album to play, right? So I want to go back to Tidal. And you can see the music stops. And this is what it did last time, is that we can't browse Tidal or another streaming service that's wrapped by DTS Playfire whilst we're listening to music. This for me is a bit of an irritation because pretty much every other streaming app that I know of, we can do that. We can listen to one track or one album and then start browsing for another. And DTS Playfire in transfer mode doesn't let us do that. We can do it in normal mode, but then the stream is traveling through the phone. So you have to pick your compromise basically. So as we've just seen, in normal playback mode, we get gapless playback on DTS PlayFi finally. However, I'm still not going to use it. This is my personal take on this, right? This is not kind of uh, an uber John as a reviewer kind of take. This is just me personally telling you what I think about PlayFi as it now stands with gapless enabled. Gapless is great, but it should be standard. This shouldn't be necessarily I mean, I know I said like break out the champagne, but it shouldn't be necessarily a cause for celebration because this should have been part of the feature set as it is with Rune, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, Airplay, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. Pretty much every other streaming app available does gapless playback. This should be standard out of the gate. That's what I think anyway. So I'm very happy that Playfire have rolled out this update for users that have been frustrated by this. But the other thing is, is that the UX, the UI problems are still there. I don't love the interface. I really don't like the fact that if I have transfer mode engaged, I can't browse for other music whilst listening to the current album. I find that a huge irritation. So you might wonder, like, why do I still have this 6000A play here? Well, I kept it around because I bought it and I wanted to wait and see if the gapless update would happen this year. It did, hence this video. But also I keep it around because it is a fantastic sounding amplifier. I just can't say enough good things about this amp. It's got this full, punchy, slightly rich, ever so slightly soft compared to the, say, the Sonos and the Blue Sound top end 
I would much rather have it in the playback chain than any of those other amplifiers, but not for its streaming smarts. And gapless being added to PlayFi doesn't change that. So if you want a bit of buying advice from me, I don't normally give this, but this is how I see the situation. I think the 6000A without the Play is the way to go. Because it has the internal DAC, but it doesn't have the PlayFi streaming board. Then you can add your own streamer. Now I've got a, a range of them here. We've seen these before. We can start with $100, the Win Mini. And if you bought the 6000A and added this and connected it over Toslink to your 6000A's internal DAC, you'd save some money on the 6000A Play. And this does AirPlay 2, it does Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect. So you can stay in the apps that the streaming services provide you. All of them. Wonderful. This also does Koba's integration, I think, inside the WIM app, which I've got to say, the WIM app, I think, is nicer than the PlayFi app. And I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure, even with the WIM app, if you're playing something on Koba's, you can still browse for something else to play next, whilst that something is currently playing. That's 100 bucks. If you want to step it up a bit, you can get the Argon Audio Solo streamer. We've covered this before. This does Rune Ready, AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, and Chromecast. But this is a great sounding streamer. Even the analog outputs make this a great sounding streamer. I don't like the analog output on the Wim. I do like this one. It's very lively and in your face. But you don't have to use that. We can use, oh, I think we can use the Coax out or the Toslink out here. And that keeps us away from, <laughs> away from PlayFi. Sorry to say it, but like pretty much every app that this supports is a nicer user experience. I should say that if you have this added to the 6000A, then you're at the same outlay as you would spend on the 6000A Play. So roughly a thousand euros. But if we step it up to the Blue Sound node, again, I've reviewed this before, I've seen this many times, we can connect the Toslink out to the 6000A's digital input. And from this, we get Rune Ready, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, AirPlay 2, HDMI. HDMI. And the great thing about the Audio Lab amplifier, this is a very, very underrated feature if you use this, right? So if you have HDMI connected here and you're using your TV's remote as I do to adjust the volume, it changes the volume in this. And you're thinking, well, hang on a minute. I'm really controlling the volume of everything from the Audio Lab unit, right, using its volume control. But what you can do is use this as a digital preamplifier. So you can turn the Audio Lab into power amp mode, then connect the analog outputs here onto the analog inputs on the Audio Lab, the power amp inputs. And then when you're changing the volume using HDMI arc, it treats this as the preamp and changes the volume accordingly. You can't do that with many other amplifiers at this kind of price point. So this is another reason that I'm very enthusiastic about the 6000A series of products. Not so much the DTS PlayFi part, but the 6000A I think is just a wonderful choice, truly. Although I do wish you could unscrew the Wi-Fi aerials from the back of the unit. They seem to be kind of like bolted on somehow. Personally, I would just take them off because I'm never going to use that PlayFi thing ever again. I'm making this video to emphasize the fact that PlayFi have made good on their promises to add gapless playback, but also how for a listener like me who's well versed in the streaming world, it's only half a step forwards. So there needs to be a lot more done to improve the interface. I'm sure they'll get there eventually. I hope so anyway, because the competition with streaming user interfaces is fierce. And the standard of user experiences with streaming apps, especially with Rune or Blue OS, is super high. Lightning DS is a good, not a great app, it's a good app. Blue OS, I guess I would say, is a good app, not a great app. Rune is a great app, but it comes at a great price. So I guess you get what you pay for there. But I, I guess I'm, what I'm saying here is that the, the interface, the user experience, really matters when you're streaming, not to everybody, but to people like me. So yeah, this was a very sort of off the cuff video. I had no script, you can tell. I hope you liked it. If you did, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio in that, 
if I'm going to spend time very carefully criticizing quite heavily a product as I did with the 6000A Play, what, nine months ago, then I really do think it is my obligation in some respects to update you when one of those very large shortcomings has been resolved, gapless playback it has, but also point out that there are other things still to solve. So if you dig that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. So if you want a bit of buying advice from me, if you, if I, I guess is this, so if you want a bit of a, so if you want a bit of buying advice from me, so if you want a bit of buying advice from me, this is how I would, so this is how, I, what am I saying, what do I want to say here?